at um, deed of assignment. I've mentioned something like that um, um, earlier, but let's look at what is deed of assignment or what is a legal deed, right? If you can still hear me loud and clear, just give me the number one. If you can still hear me loud and clear, just give me the number one. Uh, can, how many people can still hear me? Okay, only two people are with me. Oh, God. Upon my shouting, only two people. <laughs> Ibrahim said, I give you a dread. <laughs> okay, I just want us to know that. I just want to be sure that we are together. Okay, so let's move, let's move, let's move. So basically, what is legal deed? So legal deed is a legal document or a deed is a legal document prepared by a lawyer. See, let, let, me, let me say something here. Um, let a lawyer prepare your legal deed, no matter how small the transaction is. Uh, because, like I said earlier, when you are buying a property, it is the right you have. Oh, and see, this legal deed is what can determine the type of rights that you have. You can be holding something that looks like a legal deed. You are just holding a paper. It is the day of contention that you know that you, are, you don't have any paper, you don't have any rights. You don't have I'm going to cite an example shortly now. If there's a practical state, um, practical case that we're going to look at, okay? So this is a legal document prepared by a lawyer to assign a portion of land from an expanse of land. It is the fundamental requirement to possess to, uh, to possess other documents for your land, okay? So the reason why you need to get it right here, let me give uh, a case study. There's somebody, one of our um, customers in life that has a property somewhere around Lekki. And, of course, she's is a whole house. The doc, the legal deed, there was an error on the legal deed. Everything, everything perfect and all of those things. But when the assignor, so in this case now, let me, let me use previous, previously, uh, we're talking about family, right? So the family will be the assignor. So whoever is transferring title to is the assignor. Whoever is receiving the title to is the assignee. Okay, so in this case, the assignor happens to be a development company. In fact, I nearly mentioned their name. <laughs> it happens to be a development company. So when they were signing the legal deed, the, the recital, every, because when it comes to legal deed, there's something called the recital. If you get it wrong in that recital, let's, <laughs> who, who, no matter who signed it, that legal deed can be, is, 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 there's an error already. Because basically what the recital is talking about is that it's going to recite the history and why you own that property. Why that property ownership belongs to you. As in, what, what, what gives the assignor the right and what gives you, the assignee, the right to that property. That's one of the things, and many other things too, that the recital contains. You know, probably some of you have seen a document before. Okay, I don't have one close to me yet. So the recital is where they say, whereas, you know, that whereas, 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 whereas. So some, because the property has transferred from different, different, different people, you see plenty whereas, 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 whereas. Okay, because all those details are very, very important. So that in case there's a contention, it's good. And that is what they're going to use to trace how many places this land has passed through, how many um, uh, ownership that this uh, property, piece of property has passed through. Okay, so um, so in this particular case, the, the, the assignor, there was an error in that legal deed. And now, I think the legal deed was issued maybe over 10 years ago. The assignor and the assignee were in good terms 10 years ago. <laughs> but now, the assignor and the assignee are not in good terms. And now, the, because of the Lagos demolition and all of those, the man just remembered that, uh, the owner of the property just remembered, ah, I've not perfected my title to, to now go back to the uh, the assignee now to go back to the assignor is now issue because there was an error, fundamental error in the legal. They've tried that all they could. I just told them, I said, see, 
If you want to make progress, oh, the best thing is to go back to whoever signed. Even if the person is going to collect money, right? Go back and just humble yourself uh, in the presence of the... <laughs> just humble yourself and make sure that the document is properly signed because this legal deed is very, very important. And see, the reason also why you need a lawyer to prepare this for you is that your interests must be protected. Your interests must be protected. There are some legal deeds that are some clauses that if the, you as the assignee or you are the assignor, if, for instance, now you are the assignor, you are the one passing the title, right? The assignee can have some clause that will protect their own themselves. Whereas, if you are the assignee, the assignor too can have some clauses. So, it, even if you are not the one preparing it, in whatever transaction, real estate transaction that you are going into, it is always good that a lawyer vet it before you sign. Uh, that's where you know the power of your signature. Okay, so let's now go to the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room. So the certificate of occupancy. So C of O. So we will say global C of O and all of this is still relatively the same, but we are going to explain um, in details right now. Okay, so it is not certificate of ownership. It is what? Certificate of occupancy. So when it comes to land, as at... As of 1978, nobody owns any land again. That's the truth. Because prior to 1970, ACOV was not in existence. What we used to have was registered conveyance. So by the Land Use Act of 1978, which, by the way, we copied from the United Kingdom anyway. So, so all land in the urban area are vested in the governor. Where? the governor can be given the statutory rights of occupancy. So the governor has the right of occupancy. Can be given, you see, within a state, that's why as, when it comes to land law, within a state, the governor is the lord. The governor is what? Is the lord. In the UK, we have a house called the House of Lords. So these are probably the... Uh, of recent, I was studying the House of Lords in the UK. These are guys that are traditional land owning family. So they congregate together. To, so that's by the way, anyway. So, but here, the governor is the Lord. So, if he's the Lord for eight years, he's the Lord over land for eight years. Okay? So, basically, that's what the law says. So, the certificate of occupancy shows that the governor has granted a lease. So if you have a CO4, is lease is a leasehold system. Okay, is actually what a leasehold system. So it's a lease for a certain period. In most instances, it is said to be ninety nine, which is actually the maximum um, that you is usually uh, issued. In some cases, the governor even what give it less than ninety nine years. So that's what the law says. So C of O is actually a legal system. In fact, there are some people that hold title prior to 1978 that they don't sell their title. Yeah, they don't sell their title. They lease it. They lease it. There are people that, because of what they have, they, I mean, their land owning family, the, 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 uh, oh, these names are just, they, their land owning families, um, Somewhere in Maryland, I, I will remember their name. That one is, is one Momo, Momo, uh, um, uh, Martins Momo, or something like that. That's the name of the, the Mom, Momo, or something like that. That's the name. They do not sell their land. The maximum is 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. They will lease it. And they've been doing that since 18 something. Okay? They've been leasing it to people that want to do farm. Later, they will lease it to people that want to buy. And all of those. So anybody that is buying properties in some of those areas need to go and check it. I hope it is the outright purchase or is lease. And note, is it the okay? I think there's governor's consent, Nabi. Oh, there's no consent. Governor's consent, yeah. Okay. So note this. Governor has the power to consent when 
somebody with a registered title. Oh yes, yes, yes. I, I can see that now. I can see that. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. I think it's even good for me to use that to start that. Okay, so let me let me let me just explain this. I want to actually use it to explain a point. Okay, so the governor, right, has the power to consent. So whatever root title that you have that you are passing, whether it's crown, there are some people that in this country the title that they have is crown title. So basically. It was the colonial masters, and those are the people that really know the. They don't. It's the colonial masters. They don't sell their land. That gave them. They call them the crown titles, and their titles are still in the registry. So what they do is this: when they are issuing you a deed, what they will be giving to you is probably deed of lease. Um, they do not assign total ownership to you. So there is a temporary lease that they release, even if they are, they are giving to you, they are giving you expanse of land. That's why you see some tozus that we just, you just see some people that will just show up 30, 40 years later. Probably somebody bought land at 50 or 40, and the land they bought is actually a lease system. And the children thought they, held, they own a property, right? And somebody will show up 60 years later when the owner, the, the first, their father has passed on or their mother has passed on. And they'll now say, okay, sorry, oh, come and renew your lease. Right? If you can't renew your lease, park your land away from, oh, sorry, park your house away from your, our land. So those that still own that root title, right, they don't need to convert to a CFO. All they need to do is to what, whatever deed that has been issued out, it is now the, it is now the responsibility of the assignee. To now go and register that deed. So let me give you one of the reasons why some probably somebody is asking in their mind right now what gives the power of CFO to CFO? So what gives the ah somebody said the audio is poor. Ah Chinelo. I think my audio is, is better now. Look at I'm even hanging my hand. Uh, please, maybe you should log out to log in back. Eh? Um, in fact, I'm literally shouting in my office right now so that you can hear me. Okay? So what gives CFO um, uh, uh, the power that it has and also give a registered deed the power that it has is the fact that you can trace ownership. You can do what? Trace ownership, which is one of the biggest challenge that real estate is really having right now. In fact, in one of the meetings that I went for today, there were questions that were asked. I mean, we're talking about the Real Estate Developers Association today. The fundamental thing is that I'm buying from Mr. A, how can I trace the ownership that it is Mr. A that actually owns it? So it gives you a layer of problem. So that's why some people, they don't buy any property that does not have title or somebody is not taking the responsibility of title of them right for instance now for anybody that is buying from life page i mean <laughs> we still had a meeting last week having a discussion on how we want to perfect the title on our equipment project so we are the one with the body to go and perfect the title so everybody that wants to anybody that is buying from us are not carrying the body of perfection of title so we are the one that has to get it right we have the one we have in fact we don't have any choice than to just what get it right so that's what gives the power so everybody ah does land that's your does land that's your own? okay so ah, i want to use it to assess loan i want to use it to do this i want to use it to do that so government can trace who are the owner of this land it is a land with cfo and a registered deed of assignment that can be traced okay that can be traced so very, very important. Please, let's note that. So even if you buy, there's nothing wrong with buying from family, just like we have explained, right? But even if you buy, always ensure there are three things, right? There are three things we do when you buy a piece of property, a piece of land. You know, like I said, it is the land that carries the, the, the whole power. It is land. It is land that appreciates physical structure. It is maintenance. Uh, is a cost center if you are not properly <laughs> if you are not properly uh, making cash flow from it it's a cost center on its own okay so where am i going is this it is the land that carries the title and that title 
it is the title on the land that you can actually transfer not the title on the building okay so please let's note that so let's quickly look at register deed of assignment by section 22 of the same land use act of 1978 it is prohibited for a statutory right of occupancy to be alienated or assigned without the consent of the governor so it is what prohibited okay so basically what what this statement this first statement is saying that it is an offense you must not transfer ownership without telling the governor so you have to seek the consent of the governor you know there's something called the consent age uh -huh. so you have to seek the consent of the governor when you are transferring title okay so it is an action by the governor or his appointee consenting to the alienation alienation means that i am parting way with a portion of my land or with my land or assignment so let me repeat that um, statement it is an action by the governor or his appointee consenting to the alienation or assignment of a statutory right of occupancy so mr a the assigner mr b the assignee mr a is transferring title they've prepared a deed right governor must know about it so that's basically what governor consent and register deed of assignment so the process is actually governor's consent the the the, the process of governor consenting on is the governor's consent but the main thing is actually a registered deed of assignment and it's also help to easily trace it can easily be what it can easily be searched so like i said in case you have any question at every point in time so that you won't forget your questions please let's mute our mic i'm hearing some background noise so please drop your question uh, okay drop your question at the chat room i'm, I'm coming back to question okay we are, we are getting home gradually so I think we are good on register deed of assignment. So let's move to register survey. So register survey, what is a register survey? So a survey is carried out to map out the territory of an expanse of land to define its boundary. So it is the name on the survey that will be transmitted to all other forms of documentation that will be done. For instance, a life page, for instance, now, before we do your survey for you, because we know that it's, it's a critical element. In fact, there are, there, are, um, there are items on survey that often appear on deed of assignment. So we we'll tell, sorry, how do you want your name to appear? In fact, today, I was still, somebody sent, I said, what's uh, <laughs> very funny thing? No, we do a lot of funny things in this part of the world. Somebody sent something to me, said, uh, the name it should be Mr. and Mrs. <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. Oholabi. I was like, ah, there's nothing like Mr. and Mrs. Oholabi or when it comes to land title. There's nothing like that. It is Mr. XYZ Oholabi and Mrs. BWX Oholabi. That is the way it can work. It's not like now saying that uh, there's nothing like Mr. and Mrs. Do you know how many Mr. and Mrs. Oholabi that is available? My, my father gave back to uh, six boys. So, how many Mr. and Mrs. Will be that is uh, Mr. and Mrs. Will? There's plenty. Okay? So, it has to be Mr. This, then, you, you understand? So, those are things that, that the, that's the way your survey must appear. It must be fully, it must, have a, it must have a title. Is it Mr., is it Miss, is it this, and all of those things. And that same title is what we appear on your deed of assignment and that's what we keep repeating so if there's an error okay on name on boundary on size on all those things on your survey that's a foundational error and if the foundation be destroyed <laughs> all other documents are not good at all okay so that's very very so then there are different type of survey there's a draft survey there's a what there's actually a draft survey there's a draft survey. So the draft survey is basically the one on white paper. I think I should have one. Fortunately, I 
don't have it, all those documents close to me. Let's just continue, okay? So that's what is basically done on the white paper and all of those things, right? And there is a registered survey. So registered survey is the one that a registered surveyor signed, stamp, put the survey sealed on, and submit the registered copy, a record copy at the Soviet General's office of whatever state in Nigeria. That is the standard all over the country. So there's always a Soviet General's office. And what the Soviet General's office do is that they'll hold on to a copy and they will transmit your ownership. Unfortunately, they don't get, they don't do it to this level. So the GIS, there's something that each state, that's the general, uh, um, uh, the GIS is like the, the, the uh, database of land ownership. That's one of the things Lagos State is trying to do now, that everybody will have interface. That you can go to the GIS, you have your own user interface, pay money and search for any document. That's how it's supposed to be done. Lagos State is putting um, that in place right now. So they are supposed to put it there. So as soon as you put your survey number, it's supposed to show where your plot is on the GIS. Okay? So that is how it's supposed to be. So that is what is called a register survey. But most of the time in these offices, they just stack paper up. Okay, but uh, it's unfortunate, but that's what they do, right? But it's very, very important. And a register survey too is what is tenable in the court of law. Yeah, because if there is a contention, the register surveyor will be called to come and testify. That's very, very important. So. When you, are, when you want to do survey, try as much as possible to do it and get it done right. Uh, that's also very, very important so that you will not spend money that is unnecessary in the future. Okay, so I think the last one we have here is what we call the Gazette and the Session. <laughs> no, um, many years ago, there's, there's always this saying, uh, what does the title, especially in that you like like your is then, you know, what does the title, what's the title of your land? Excision, 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 excision. <laughs> so let's, let's break the, um, let's break it down right now. So basically, what is excision, what is gazette, right? So there's a definition here which is very, very straightforward, okay? So excision is the act of partitioning a portion for the use and giving the other parts to the family or community. Gazette is the document issued for the act of excision. I think that's a very, very simple and straightforward explanation. So let me give you a practical example. You know, let's take for instance now. Um, there was a during uh, between the Fashola and the uh, between Tinubu as a governor and Fashola as a governor. That during that time there was something that was developed that was called the Lekki Peninsula Master Plan. So those masters, the master plan that covers after VI all the way to Ibejuleki and all of that. Then Ekpe has his own master plan too. Okay. So in that master plan, they carved out a place for industry, they carved out for residence, they carved out for public use and all of those things. In fact, you know, of recent, I think I, I mentioned it. I think I, I mentioned this somewhere today. Uh, okay, it was a, it was an earlier discussion. Was like the 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 go the uh, because Lagos State is doing a lot of revenue drive. One of the commissioner was saying that land is our oil in Lagos. <laughs> land is the oil in Lagos, right? So they have to protect. They want to collect land use charge. They want to collect everything and all of that. So basically, because they needed a, an expanse of land for the free trade zone for ports for a lot of things because there's a master plan that they want to execute and most of this land especially in that axis i mean the family they are quite structured they are land owning family and all of those things so basically what they do is that they carry out the process of excision that is to say okay you uh the old Shogma family uh, i think i remember one of the names i wanted to remember then the old Shogma is a very large land owning family oh, yeah, old family yeah, come here. All your land in the low law of Lagos State is uh, 5,000 hectares. Okay, no problem. Take 500 hectares, go and share it among your family. 
4,500 hectares token is belongs to government. So the portion they release to the Shobo family, most of the reasons why they will tell you to even re that, that they release it to you is because it's a village extension, is this, they will state all the reasons there. What it can be used for and what it cannot be used for is to be stated in that document that is called Gazette. So the process of carrying out that pop, that is what is called a session. Whereas the document that state it is actually called a gazette. Okay, so a gazette is actually a, I think a, 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 a um, is a government tool. Okay, that is usually used to enact a a decree or maybe an executive order stuff like that. So it, it, it goes through a lot of process, and the gazette is always released after. I mean, even if at the federal level, beyond land title, a lot of document comes out and they gazette it and it's always available for public public use so a session is not a title a session is a process and what comes out of it the document that comes out of it is a gazette and if you buy a land that is gazetted you are still expected yes you are covered you are covered in the sense that um, um uh, we are covered in the sense that there can be contention of the land unless if there's contention among the family However, you still need to go and what, register your interest on that piece of land, okay? So that is land title and documentation. So let me backtrack, especially for those of us um, that are just joining us.